After you install and launch UEFN, you'll see the project browser. This is where you can create new projects or open existing ones. If you've ever used Fortnite Creative, you may find there are already some projects here, like these. Islands made in Fortnite Creative can be selected in UEFN and converted into a UEFN project, but going forward, you can only edit your island in UEFN. At the top of the My Projects view is a drop-down for creator teams, which can be created, joined, or maintained in the creator portal. Teams let you share projects between members, letting you work together using Unreal Revision Control to keep in sync. In addition to the My Projects section, there are quick shortcuts to documentation and community support at the top. Below My Projects are Island Templates, which provide a great starting point for your island. The Blank Template is a UEFN exclusive template, while the other islands, like Archipelago, are from Fortnite Creative. Next are Feature Examples, which are projects that showcase a specific mechanic or function of UEFN, like different verse examples and animation. Each feature example has billboards throughout the island with instructions on how to recreate the features and also have documentation links to follow along. These examples are a great way to learn features of UEFN. Finally, our sample projects. Here are completed island experiences that also contain billboards explaining how everything works and have documentation. These sample projects differ from feature examples in scope as they are completed and polished experiences you can play. All of the templates, examples, and projects may be updated, with more being added as time goes on. To make your first project, head to the Island Templates section and choose the blank template. At the bottom of the screen, you can change the project location if you want, and change the name. Let's call this My First Hour, then click Create. After a bit of time, the editor should open. If this is the first time you've opened UEFN, you should see the default layout of the editor like what's on screen. If at any time something happens, like you close a panel or move something, you can click the window menu at the top and load the default layout to follow along again. Now let's go over the basic parts of the editor. Starting with the top row of options, the File tab is where you'll save and load projects, and the Edit tab is where you can change the preferences and undo or redo any changes. The Window tab can be used to save and load different layouts or open any windows that are needed. The Tools tab has revision control settings and the Verse tab is where you build any verse code you've written or open Visual Studio Code. The Build tab may be needed for landscaping. The Select tab lets you quickly select all of a certain type of prop. And the Help tab has quick access to documentation. Generally, you won't need to access these menus often outside of adjusting windows or building verse code. Under this is the toolbar where a lot of important shortcuts are. You have quick access to the Save button in the top left, as well as a way to open the content browser and select the current level. Then there's a drop down to select the editor mode. You'll probably spend most of your time in selection mode, but landscaping, foliage, modeling, and animation modes have their own tools associated with them that you'll learn about later in the course. The project drop down is for managing certain project information, like uploading the island to a private version. The Create menu lets you place actors quickly, like lights or basic shapes. The Fab button can be clicked to open Fab, where you can find assets to use in a project. The Verse button will open the current project in Visual Studio Code, and the Launch Session button will open Fortnite and connect it to your UEFN project, letting you playtest your game or live edit, which you'll learn about soon. The three dots lets you change certain settings, like auto-starting the game. The session information is displayed next, and while in a session, you can start or stop the game from the editor. Finally, if you are connected to a team, you can find that information here, and under Settings, you'll find a few key settings, like Scalability. Lowering this is a good idea if the computer is having trouble running the project. Below the toolbar is the viewport, where you can see the world. To move around, hold the right mouse button while over the viewport, and use the WASD keys to move. You can move your mouse while holding down the right mouse button to move the camera, and use the E and Q keys to move up or down. Holding the left mouse button keeps the camera fixed vertically, but allows for movement in panning left or right. These are the fundamental controls for movement while in the viewport that you'll need to be comfortable with, so feel free to move around the world and get used to the controls. At the top of the viewport, you'll find a toolbar with access to important shortcuts. The Menu button on the top left contains various settings, and the Next button lets you change the view of the viewport. Right now, we are in what's called a Perspective view, but you may find it useful to instead use an orthographic view, like a right view. 
Next is a menu of view modes. Lit is the normal view, but it can be very useful to place props and see your world in an unlit manner, or see wireframes and other modes. Next is a menu of flags that let you show or hide different properties or widgets, like seeing the collisions of different props. Time of day lets you adjust the current time of day in the viewport, assuming you are using the Fortnite time of day manager that is enabled by default. On the right, you can see the project size, and then you have the different ways to interact with the different assets in your world. First is the selection tool, which simply lets you click on assets and select them. Then you have the translate tool, which lets you move assets around the world. The rotation tool lets you rotate assets, and the scale tool lets you increase or decrease the size of an asset. You can activate these tools by pressing keyboard shortcuts Q for the selection tool, W for the translate tool, E for rotation, and R for scaling. Or if you have one of the tools enabled, you can use the spacebar to switch between the three tools. Next to these is a button that lets you change the coordinate system between world and local space. This lets you manipulate props based on their local position or the world grid in your project. Next is surface snapping, which lets you snap objects to surfaces while dragging them around. This grid pattern you see is controlled by this snap to grid menu, where you can enable or disable it and change the grid size. Lower values create a small grid, letting you smoothly move props and snap them while larger grid sizes snap props further from each other on a larger grid. Turning this setting off disables snapping, letting you manually move the prop where you'd like. The same is true for rotation snapping, but instead of a grid size, it snaps based on degrees of rotation, like 90 for smooth rotating of objects in 90 degree increments. And the same is true for scale snapping. Next, you can change the camera's speed, which lets you go faster or slower while navigating the viewport. You can also adjust this on the fly using your mouse wheel. Finally, you have a toggle for the four viewport views. This opens four different viewports that you can adjust individually. Maybe you want one view for wireframes or another from the top down. You can maximize an individual viewport by clicking the maximize button on the top right. Moving on from the viewport, you can see the outliner in the top right of the screen. The outliner shows all of the items that are inside of the world. For example, you can see I have four grid planes, island settings, two spawn pads, level bounds, and world items. If I was to add something new from the Create menu, like a point light, you can now see it in the outliner. Selecting the point light in the viewport or from the outliner will display its settings and information in the Details window. This is where you can change things such as the light color and intensity of the light, or other details about an item. If you open the world settings from the window menu at the top, you can adjust the individual settings for the map you're currently on. This is where you can disable the time of day manager if you'd like. Our last item is our content browser, which you actually can't see. You can click the content drawer button in the bottom left or hold control and click the space bar to open and close it. This is where all of the assets for our project and potential assets we can use live. Take a look inside of the My First Hour content folder where you can see our map and our game feature data. The Fortnite folder contains many different props, devices, and other items from Fortnite that you can use in your project. The Epic folder has different materials and textures you might also find useful. You can dock the content drawer to make it a panel like the outliner, and in the window menu, you can open up to four content browsers in case you need to have different folders open at the same time. One thing to note for all of these panels is you can adjust their size by clicking and dragging on their borders or take the panel itself and place it somewhere else. Remember, if you ever want to go back to the default layout, you can do it in the window menu. With all of that information, you should have a good understanding of how to navigate around the editor. In this next lesson, you'll learn how to import assets and work with content in the editor.